Since I have a Premier Twin 8 in the shop, and I have determined that with the exception of the 12AX7 tube and the plug on the power cord, the rest of the unit is in fact all original parts. The circuits, the components, even the speakers. Over the years I've received numerous emails. A lot of you have answered my questions and I appreciate that a lot. And But what, what gets down to is I have no idea about the speakers. I made some assumptions when I put together schematics and did the calculations, which I did in my Premier Twin 8 video series, when I brought the amp out of archaeological dig and actually recreated again to hear what that sounded like, because I was always impressed with how fat the amp sound is with a blues harp. I wanted to recreate that. That's what I like playing, and many of you do too. But I needed to know something about the speakers. Well, I've never had one of these speakers in the shop before, but now I do, and it's original. So I thought, for a 50-year-old speaker, I want to know how it measured. What is the rating on this speaker? My assumptions over the years, just based on the design of the 7591 itself, the output transformer is a 5k to 8 ohm output transformer. It has to be rated for at least 10 watts. 15 is good. You don't want to overheat it. But then I've assumed that, hey, if it's at 5k to 8 ohm, that means there's two 4 ohm speakers in series being driven. I knew from photographs and other testimonials they are El Nico magnets on those speakers. I need to know, are the speakers contributing to that fat mojo sound? I have an answer to that. This is the back end of this amp that I have in the shop. Speaker A and Speaker B. The, the date stamp, which is fairly common back then in the mid-60s and 70s, they put a date stamp on there. First two digits, 65 means it was built in 1965. 47 is the week, 47th week. Now then, this amp is younger because the reverb tank itself is stamped 1966. The speakers are still 52 years old, but they probably only have been played for less than that. But I, I hooked up speaker A, speaker B, did independent measurements, put them both together, did another set of measurements, and this is what I found. Now then, remember, the speakers are 52 years old. A reason I point that out is Alnico magnets, rare earth magnets, ceramic magnets, so on and so forth, they age differently from one to another. As magnets, especially a rare earth magnet, if it were to overheat, such as in a motor, if they overheat, they lose some of their magnetism and makes the motor less powerful. Alnico's, because they are in, they are a motor, is a speaker motor. If they're overdriven, if they get too hot, it will diminish their effectiveness. The speaker's 52 years old. I don't know how hard this amp has been played, what the service life is. There's going to be some aging to this. How significant is that? Probably not going to show up in the measurement, but whatever it was originally, I should still see that today. Are they 4 ohm? Well, here it is. So the, the blue zone, there's the shaded area for the uh, natural frequency of the blues harp from 200 hertz to 2900 hertz. That sets context. How does the speaker respond within the context of a blues harp player is the shaded blue area. The speaker measures 2.8 ohms DC, speaker B. The nominal impedance is 3.1 ohms at 400 hertz. 400 hertz is important to understand. Even when you look at the 1940s and 50s books of uh, Harry Olson, he points out you need to know at what frequency. Is it 400 or is it 1,000? If you buy a speaker, you need to know what the nominal impedance is, certainly, because you need to match it up to the amp, but you need to know at what frequency is that measurement. I do all my measurement evaluation at 400 hertz. 
So it measures 3.1 ohms, not 4. I thought that's interesting, but what caught me by surprise were these harmonics that you see here. 800, 4000, 8000. And at first I thought, okay, maybe I made a mistake in my measurement. So I went and pulled out a few other speakers from other amps that I have around the shop and in my studio and reevaluated. Am I measuring this correctly? Are the techniques and steps in the measurement protocol that I have correctly followed? Did I skip a step? Uh, you know, so on and so forth. I wanted repeatability. I wanted to make sure that I'm as calibrated in performing the test as the test equipment is calibrated to perform the test itself and give me the readings. After a number of reading of other speakers, I come back to this and it repeats itself. This particular speaker has harmonics at 800, 4000, 8000. These harmonics are related to the voice coil, not the natural frequency of the speaker so much. 80 hertz, 800, 8000, you can make the case the other way. Maybe it is a harmonic of the natural frequency. If so, that's interesting. Now, the natural frequency for a speaker is the attachment of the cone to the basket down to the spider, which connects the bottom part of the cone to the bottom part of the basket, and then the paper and the config, you know, geometry of the paper, type of paper. That sets up the natural frequency that's being measured at 80 hertz. There are three other natural, uh, three other harmonics on this. And I thought, well, that's interesting. It's got some artifacts in it. Speaker A. No artifacts up there, but when you drop back down to the back EMF frequency, it is still 80 hertz. There's a harmonic at 40, 80, and 120. In other words, the natural frequency for speaker A is rather fat. It's not narrow, precise, and defined. It is somewhat fat. I thought, that's always a good thing. We want a fat sound. Is that contributing to the fat sound? There's an answer for that too. 2.8 ohms DC, 2.8 ohms nominal frequency uh, impedance at 400 hertz. Now typically what you find, and that's the reason I repeated this measurement several times, is the impedance at 400 hertz is normally elevated or more than the DC ohms rating. It wasn't that way in this case. Same setup as for speaker B running over here. There's marginally very little difference. Comparing the two, speaker A to speaker B, speaker B has those high frequency harmonics, speaker A has some low frequency uh, harmonics. So now when I measure both of them together, what do I get? Again, the blue area is the harp range from 200 to 2900 hertz. Speaker B dominates. The back EMF, or the natural frequency, is still 80 hertz. It dominates. The side lobes have gone away. Speaker B also dominates at the high end. The uh, 4,000 and 8,000 harmonic are still present. Inside the middle, in the blues harp playing uh, frequency range, the, both the speakers respond the same. Uh, it's a little jagged. There's some artifacts. A lot of that comes from the mounting, the box, so on and so forth, but they measure the same. Overall, both speakers measure 5.5 ohms DC or 5.8 ohms nominal impedance at 400 hertz. What's that mean? Well, I have to take some evaluation. We're, let's pull this all together. Typically, you'll build uh, the output transformer will have an 8 ohm output to an 8 ohm speaker. They will be matched. Nominal impedance 8 ohms. When you drop it from 8 ohms nominal to 5.8 ohms nominal, you unload the amp. Yeah, it increases the current back onto the primary because of the reflected impedance. It's lower, it reflects higher, drives it a little higher. That could be contributing to the mojo, I thought. Uh, but they're not 4 ohm Alnicos. They are 3.2 ohm Alnico speakers. You can put a 4 ohm in there, not a problem. It'll still sound the same. 
but they're 3.2 ohm. If you wanted to, you can certainly go buy a vintage speaker with Alnico magnets at, rated at 3.2 ohm. You wouldn't change the output transformer any. It'd still be a 5K to 8 ohm output transformer, but you're now driving a 6 ohm load rather than an 8 ohm load. <clears throat> That's what the original speakers are. They're not 4 ohms. They're 3.2 ohm. So then I thought, how's this compare to the Ted Weber series, 8-inch eight, eight signature series speakers I have in my rebuild? Uh, it measures at 90 hertz. Now, that I took the, the blue line that you see here, I took an average through the Premier Twin 8, and I superimposed it down here in the Ted Weber series, so you, a little bit clearer for you. They're both 5.8 ohm nominal impedance. Characteristically, it's flat in the area that we want it to be flat in the Blues Harp range. The Ted Weber tends to have more impedance at the higher range than the Premier Twin. And then the next final question is, if these are 8 ohm Alnico Ted Weber series, or actually 4 ohm apiece, why is it measuring 5.8 nominal? Well, I play this thing quite heavily. My amp is set up, the Premier Twin 8, Premier Twin 8R, are set up as 10 watt units. The 7591A tube I'm using is capable of 19 watts dissipation. My amp is set up to deliver between 15 and 19 watts. I drive them fairly hard. I'm driving some distortion. So over a couple years of playing time heating them up, this is where I expected those Ted Webbers to fall into. They drop down to 5.8 ohms nominal impedance, just like the Premier Twin 8R which is 52 years old. It also could be that the reason they measure like they do is because they are Alnico. They compress as you push the uh, frequency into the speakers. When it gets sharp, they will compress. We may be seeing a little compression. Don't ask me how that involves the impedance, but it's the only other thing I can come up with it to rationalize why my Ted Webbers aren't looking at 8, they're looking at 5.8, and I think it has something to do, I'm pushing them hard on wattage, I know I have heated them up, they clearly go in distortion, I've put some wear and tear on them, they're 5.8, and it also could be something to do with compression. Is it a good fit? Yes, it is. I like these Ted Webbers, and it sounds much the same as the Twin R. So the question then gets down to, if it's the speakers that's creating the mojo, I should be able to hook up a diff these speakers out of the original Premier Twin 8 and hear the same sound if it's the speakers themselves contributing to it. So I did a test. Why not? It's in the shop. I can hook it up. So first of all, I took my Hunter Hoodoo, which is rated at 5 to 10 watts, hooked it up, played my Hoodoo through the Premier Twin 8 speakers, and it sounded just like my Hunter Hoodoo. It didn't give me the fat sound that you hear out of Premier Twin. I hooked up my Premier Twin 8 to these speakers, and it sounded just like my particular Premier Twin 8. It's not as fat as the Twin 8R, so the fat sound is under investigation. It has something to do with the way the first stage preamp is set up and the tone stack and then possibly the load capacitors on the second stage preamp. All three of those I'm experimenting with in my particular version of the Premier Twin 8. And when I get that resolved, I'll post that video for you later. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.